Welcome to the Guaranteed Irish Business Podcast, where each week we're joined by leaders of Guaranteed Irish member businesses to chat about how they sustain jobs, communities and provenance. Supported by FBD Insurance, Ireland's largest homegrown insurer. Support. It's what we do. Hi there, my name is Breed O'Connell and joining me today is Callum Warren, Partner, Competition and Regulatory Group at Matheson, to discuss competition and regulation laws, new upcoming legislations and the Guaranteed Irish Food and Drinks Forum. You're very welcome, Callum. Uh, thanks for having me, Breed. Delighted to be here. Uh, so tell us a little bit about, uh, I suppose, first give an overview and a quick breakdown on Matheson and what the company does for those who not, might not be fully aware. Yeah, no, thanks very much. Um, so overall, we're the law firm of choice for internationally focused companies and financial institutions doing business in and from Ireland. Um, within that, we advise uh, a, a large swathe of domestic companies across all sectors, in particular financial services and food and beverage in terms of your uh, two upcoming focuses in, in the coming months. Um, within financial services, we advise all the accountancy firms, the corporate advisory firms, uh, the consultancy firms, all, all manner of financial services uh, clients Great. as well. Um, we also uh, advise clients of all sizes really uh, mm. if the issue is critical enough uh, to, to the business we find that ma- uh, clients do come forward and see- seek our advice uh, irrespective of size as well so I think that's important to emphasize and it's a large uh, law firm it's yeah. the largest in Ireland now we are not? we're yeah. now, now the largest in Ireland so uh, how many ha- people employ there uh, we're 700 in total uh, oh. across all lawyers and staff I think we're around four 450 lawyers and uh, within that about 125 partners great uh, we have offices in dublin we have a new offices in cork which mm. we're very proud of in penrose rock um we're, we're the only uh, large firm uh, uh located down in cork and then we have offices in london uh new york and then the west coast in uh, san francisco it's really a great success story in terms of how big it's grown in more recent terms and it's great to see you putting the uh, same effort back into Cork uh, in Ireland here so uh, not losing sight of the two capitals of Ireland there. Absolutely no Cork is a really significant location for us Uh, we're really proud of our presence in Cork a lot of our clients are based in Cork obviously it's a huge uh, multinational and large company presence down in Cork. Absolutely particularly in the pharma sector I'd imagine in the pharma sector in the tech sector in in the food and beverage sector as well yeah. And that's obviously growing as well. There's huge ambition for Cork as a city uh, and we're happy to be part of that growth as well. That's brilliant and good to see that confidence as well coming from large organisations and firms going into Cork and to the regions from a company like Matheson. So your own background then, Callum, tell us your, uh, about your position, your partner with them in the area of competition and regulatory. Uh, tell us a little bit about that and sometimes when you think of competition and regulatory, you think of oodles of reading and law so uh tell us a little bit about how that works and your position and role within the organization yeah no thanks um yeah no i've been a partner um in the competition and regulation group uh, i've been in matheson for three years before that i was in london and brussels for right. around 10 years in total brilliant so i have that multi-jurisdictional experience which i've been able to bring back to brilliant. my practice in ireland um our practice really uh kind of covers quite a lot of ground um it covers competition law uh it covers all manner of regulation law it covers eu law and it uh, kind of applies in lots of different contexts so we advise in the context of transactions we do litigation we do advisory work um so it's really kind of the full suite um, across competition and regulation. And I'd imagine in terms of changes coming through the EU, which you've obviously had huge experience in, in terms of the area of food now, which we're going to be talking about very soon in Cork, um, what are we seeing coming down the line there? Yeah, there's a lot happening in food. Obviously, there's a, a quite a, a kind of a solid and um, a f- f- kind of regulatory framework um, in terms of the regulation of food uh, and drink uh, across Europe. Um, there's the kind of general food law uh, uh, regulation uh, at eu level which uh really regulates um kind of food and the supply of food and manufacture mm. of food at mm. all levels um there's regulation um both existing and new coming to, um in, in relation to um the supply of food the labeling of food um the advertising of food uh, so there's a whole kind of swathe of regulation um both kind of new and existing um, that that will impact kind of clients in that sector. In terms of competition law, explain what that is for businesses and its importance. Yeah, no, competition law is of kind of key importance um, to kind of public policy and uh, economic economic policy in all countries. Um, It regulates competition in the market and interactions between uh, competing firms within the market. 
Um, it has a number number of applications. Um, primarily, it regulates um, and prohibits anti-competitive conduct between uh, companies in sectors, um, and that includes both coordinated conduct between uh, companies, so agreeing to um, do uh, kind of uh, do illegal conduct in the market, and also it prohibits uh, unilateral conduct in the market so, so protecting the consumer all the time ultimately protecting the consumer protecting competition in the market protecting small competitors in the market which are obviously important for competition and, and for the economy as a whole overall kind of seeking to maximize uh, consumer welfare from an economic perspective um, it also regulates uh, M&A activity in the market. Mm. Um, so if you have a, a, tra- a kind of a certain size of transaction in the market, um, uh, an application to the Irish Competition Regulator, the Consumer uh, Competition and Consumer Protection um, Commission is required. Uh, and that kind of is often where we come in uh, okay. to help clients kind of through that process. Yeah, and I'm sure it's a great detail. And May, as you know, is Professional Services Month here in Guaranteed Irish. So talk us through how competition law is of particular importance to the professional services sector. Yeah, well, competition law really applies to all sectors and is equally important across sectors. It, it is uh, as important to professional services as other sectors as well. Professional services have been under the spotlight over the years by the competition regulator. Uh, we've had a number of uh, enforcement actions and investigations, for example, into the Irish Dental Association, the Irish Medical Association. The competition regulators, regulators also carried out uh, market inquiries into actually the legal profession, so our profession yeah. uh, and other professions as well. So, for example, the veterinary uh, profession and has looked at competition in the market uh, in, in those sectors, the workings and, and made recommendations on how competition could be improved. Um, the expectation would be that it will continue to be under yeah. the spotlight. So it's very important, really, for all professional services of all sizes to be aware of uh, competition obligations. So and it keeps all the compliance. businesses on their toes. Then. It really does. Yeah. Uh, and that will ha- ha- has been the case for quite some time. But uh, it's obviously w- will increase in, in importance with the new uh, Competition Amendment Act in, in 2022, which is about to come into force. OK. And what are the key elements and what change does that amendment bring then? Yeah, so it's a huge piece of legislation Mm. overall. It really will revolutionize uh, competition enforcement uh, and the compliance with competition rules in Ireland. Um, To date, we've really only had a criminal enforcement regime where the competition regulator has only been able to investigate uh, competition conduct to the criminal standard. So obviously very high, which has meant that very few cases have been taken. Yeah, of course. Um, Beyond criminal enforcement, um, the competition regulator has really had quite light powers okay so the new amendment then what's that going to how is that going to change things? it's basically going to increase the regulator's investigative and sanctioning powers Great. it allows uh, the regulator to impose uh, fines of up to 10 percent of worldwide turnover right um, on companies so we're looking at potential fines wow. in the hundred uh, in, in the millions or hundreds of millions so yeah. on a par with the types of fines you see in the headlines that the uh, data protection commission yeah, or the course. central bank has imposed on companies uh, of all sizes um in, in recent years so that, that's, that's really going to bring grit into the whole thing isn't it give it a, real absolutely teeth. um yeah. and it's really something kind of all companies across sectors in particular in financial service uh, in professional services and need when to did that of. kick in Callum? Um, it's about to come into force. It was enacted in June of last year. Mm. Um, it's about to come in force imminently. Um, there's a whole kind of con- constitutional law dimension mm. to it, which is uh, uh, delayed uh, the, the actual um, uh, commencement of the act, but it is expected in, in the coming weeks, actually. Okay, uh, so, so 2023. Tw- certainly 2023, but the expectation is that it will come into force p- uh, before the summer. Brilliant. Okay, well, there's uh, lots of business in that and lots of, I suppose, T's to be crossed in businesses operating in those spaces uh, that need to keep an eye on that. So Matheson are the people to go to, obviously. <laughs> we, we, we think so. Uh, and what are the main types of commercial behaviours that would be considered illegal, for example, in that sense? And are there any r- particular risks for the professional services sector in particular there? Yeah, so in terms of the types of commercial behaviours mm. that are uh, illegal, uh, you obviously have traditional forms of conduct, so price fixing, market yeah. sharing, customer sharing, um, anything to do with kind of restricting volumes or output mm. <clears throat> in services or, or products. Mm. Um, you also have information exchange that can mm. happen bilaterally between companies. It can happen multilaterally um, in the context, for example, of uh, industry associations. Um, 
You also have newer types of conduct that are being looked at um, at an EU level mm. and are expected to be looked at at an Irish level, uh, for example, labor market issues. So mm. uh, your types of conduct have arisen in, in lots of sectors um, where companies have agreed not to poach each other's uh, employees and yeah. in particular in senior employees. Mm. They've exchanged information on wages and salaries and that's all really mm. deemed to be anti-competitive and mm. uh, subject to competition rules. So that's a new area. Very difficult to implement, isn't it? Uh, absolutely um but companies really should be aware that that yeah. type of conduct uh, okay, good. Kind of sh- should obviously be avoided but could ultimately be investigated if yeah. any employees across the organization are talking to their competitors in those terms and what are the potential sanctions then if they're found to be guilty yeah well the sanctions both for the company uh, and individual uh, mm. executives within right. the company um in terms of sanctions for the company you have both criminal and civil fines obviously civil fines are increasing to 10% of worldwide turnover Big, under the yeah. new act that will come into force. Um, companies uh, quite significant, significantly can also be subject to uh, private damages actions. So right. other uh, customers or suppliers in the market that have suffered harm as a result of anti-competitive conduct can essentially sue companies um, that have been engaged in such, such conduct before the Irish courts um, and sue them for hundreds of millions of euros uh, for, for damage suffered and um, there's obviously reputational damage there's damage c- c- to commercial relationships and um, obviously kind of having to um, deal with regulators in, in relation to potential conduct issues mm. is a huge uh, mm. uh, um, burden on management time and resources as well um, <clears throat> for individuals um, there's both criminal and civil um, sanctions as well um, in terms of uh, criminal sanctions, this huge fines can be imposed. Um, uh, executives can be subject to imprisonment as well. Um, director disqualification is something that can be massive um, change there. Well. So isn't it? It's a big change coming down the line. Okay, so right now we're just going to take a quick break to hear from some of our members. Guaranteed Irish business member Viva Green continues to sustain jobs and communities across Ireland. Looking for personal care products kinder to your skin, your planet, and your pocket. Try Viva Green's new True Eco personal care range of body wash, hand wash and shampoo, all made using plant-based biodegradable ingredients with a refreshing natural citrus scent. Find True Eco in select Super Value and Eco stores nationwide. Visit vivagreen.ie and look out for the G, guaranteed Irish, altogether better. In terms of compliance then for the companies to prevent that from happening what can they do in terms of being more compliant and what are their actions that they're currently undertaking because i assume the companies are preparing for this now absolutely and um, there should be at least yeah there should be um and we're certainly engaging with lots of clients in particular Great. in relation to the new act because of kind of how yeah. serious the sanctions are yeah. um in terms of formal actions that companies can take um there's kind of lots of different steps companies can really take to um, kind of ensure kind of ongoing compliance with uh, competition obligations to identify risk early uh, and to try and mitigate that. Um, the types of um, actions or initiatives that client organizations um, consider are, for example, putting a formal uh, competition compliance program in right. place and give, giving formal regular trainings um, to company executives to ensure that the relevant obligations are understood. Um, within that, um, uh, a regulator response protocol is something that uh, right. organizations consider as well. So ensuring that you're prepared um, mm. to respond to either a regulator inspection or formal information request mm. if it arises. Um, in particular, in relation to inspections, there's huge uh, sanctions can be imposed for non-compliance and right. non-cooperation. So in that context, it's important that a, for- a formal protocol has been devised um, before uh, an inspection happens to ensure uh, companies can't be sanctioned for uh, non-cooperation or uh, obstruction. So I see this as a real expensive cost in terms of time, personnel, resources, and um, for the prevention, which obviously has to happen, it's the law now, for the smaller business it's going to be very challenging where does matheson fit in in helping those businesses and how can they afford to do it and what what stages or what what service can matheson do to help yeah absolutely um we really advise companies of all sizes of obviously a lot of our clients are kind of bigger uh, uh, multi-jurisdictional mm. uh, organizations but we do advise uh, smaller irish uh 
based uh, companies as well. Um, I suppose the way really to look at it is that having a competition issue and being subject to potential fines is extremely costly and expensive yes, and sure. has a reputation on consequences. You can't afford companies. not to do it. You can't afford mm. not to do it ultimately. Mm. Um, so an investment in ensuring compliance and kind of getting ahead of issues is really, I seen by a lot of organizations, yeah. irrespective of size, is a world worthwhile investment. Um, we can kind of advise clients on a very cost-effective basis. Um, we there are kind of lots of uh, the, the formal actions I'm I'm talking about in terms of uh, having putting uh, compliance programs in in place or giving trainings to to clients or something we're very familiar with, so mm. we can do it on a very cost-effective basis and work within. Uh, budgets within organizations good and in terms of the services that you you help for the companies who are in breach are there other regulations or industry changes on the horizon that listeners should be made aware of to like prevention is the is better than any cure let's be honest especially when you're talking about those figures uh what else is there out there in terms of what's coming down the line callum yeah i think one um kind of additional uh, kind of piece of regulation that companies should really be aware of or uh, an area where uh, regulators are becoming increasingly active is really on the M&A side. Right. Um, so M&A activity is being scrutinized very heavily by regulators, um, in, particular, in particular the competition regulator is becoming more interventionist for uh, in relation to transactions of all sizes, in particular right. actually uh, small, uh, smaller and medium-sized really? transactions in recent years. And okay. a lot of those types of transactions have been put through uh, very extensive regulatory review processes. Um, okay. So it's really something kind of companies need to be aware of if they're engaging in M&A activity. Okay. Um, it, companies that are kind of active or provide products or services in the broader digital space need to be aware of the kind of a, a kind of a huge um, range of digital regulation that is uh, coming into force, uh, kind of has come into force, mm. uh, expected to come into force in, in, in kind of the coming months and mm. years. Um, both at Irish and EU level that they'd be subject mm. to as well. And navigating that is w w kind of obviously gives rise to huge complexities. Yeah. Uh, data privacy as well yeah. uh, obviously remains kind yeah. of a huge area of regulation that's uh, becoming more of a burden on companies. Yeah. Um, the regulator, the Data Protection Commission is becoming more active as it obviously imposed fines on huge range of companies kind of across sectors as well so that's really kind of an, an area that and i suppose at the end of the day a lot of this is largely to mind us the consumer or joe blogs out there on the street so a lot of it is to be welcomed but there is a cost to it and prevention is the better is the better option Absolutely. so um in terms of master classes and i suppose introductions to this matheson is a kind of a first stop stop shop i assumed for businesses to become aware of what's going on and we're okay. happy to obviously talk to any organization that's considering um, either implementing or updating kind of internal compliance programs if they want to run trainings with, with senior execs. That's something we can obviously help with as well. And as I said, we can obviously work within uh, kind of whatever budget companies. might be available yeah. and uh, kind of getting ahead of these types of issues. And kind it's of, the key, actually, it, isn't really it? Yeah, you don't want yeah. to kind of have to face... Uh, well, I'm a big I fan of prevention is better than the cure, for sure. And let's keep the regulator busy on somebody else, I suppose, <laughs> exactly. as opposed to our business. Now, next month, Callum, we are hosting the Guaranteed Irish Food and Drinks Forum at Matheson's office in Cork. We're delighted to be there. It's an amazing location. And thanks to Matheson for sponsoring that venue. What are you looking forward to and what do you hope to get out of the event? Speaking of compliance. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's going to be a fantastic event. We're absolutely delighted at Matheson to be able to, to be hosting it, especially in our uh, Cork offices. Um, obviously, it's I think the, the title of the event is Cracking S Sustainability in the Face of Rising Costs. So really interesting and critical issue, I mm. think, to discuss. Sustainability obviously kind of remains a uh, critical issue of our time absolutely. Um, in terms of kind of ESG, environmental sustainability goals. Um, interestingly, it does really have kind of quite a significant competition dimension, um, uh, collaboration or, or, or kind of cooperation within industries in relation to sustainability has a competition dimension and parties really need to do so kind of in line with competition obligations, mm. um, kind of having interactions with other kind of industry players, um, obviously has a, uh, kind of a competition dimension and, uh, parties need to be kind of aware, uh, kind of comply and, um, engage in such initiatives in line with 
that their obligations um well thanks so much for that callum in terms of the event uh, more details on our website so do visit that but in the meantime thanks to matheson for their support to date and particular thank you to you callum today for joining us and having this conversation yeah, in relation to regulation and uh particularly getting our ducks lined up and make sure we don't get caught uh, doing anything we shouldn't be doing and um, I suppose again prevention is better than the cure if you want to learn more about Matheson and their services we will leave a link to their website in the show notes thank you as always for listening and don't forget to hit the subscribe button to wherever you are listening to the podcast today the Guaranteed Irish Business Podcast sponsored by FBD Insurance Ireland's largest homegrown insurer support it's what we do